3,500 years. That's how long we've been cultivating this pea, and it's called a pigeon pea. Now, why is it called a pigeon pea or gandul? For the same reason horseradish is called horseradish. Actually, it doesn't have to do with horses, nor this has to do with pigeons. But it's one of the most important ingredients in a Puerto Rican dish that we're gonna show you how to cook today called arroz con gandules, or rice with pigeon peas. Today, on Puerto Rican Flavors. It's our main ingredient for arroz con gandules or rice with pigeon peas. So the main parts of how to make arroz con gandules is really your pigeon peas, your short grain rice, and the Puerto Rican cooking base, which is called sofrito. Uh, now, for the pigeon peas, um, here we have uncooked pigeon peas. Now, you can actually cook them yourself, uh, which would make it taste a lot better, but, you know, given that we're just common cooks, uh, you can go to your grocery store and get one of these uh, cans. It's uh, uh, Goya brand, uh, it's green pigeon peas, and these work almost as well as, as, as the rest, but it saves you a lot of time. This is, I would say, is the beginner level of arroz con gandules. If you want to make it really good and add that extra magic, we have these additional ingredients over here, which is really sazon, which has a lot of other flavors that will add flavor to the rice and to the gandules. Chicken stock, or you can, I mean, what gives you that chicken stock flavor, you can use a chicken broth if you want. Uh, we also have some capers and we have some olives. And all of these will actually, you know, kind of bring your beginner level arroz con gandules to an advanced level of arroz con gandules that you might find in the actual restaurant. So once you have all this, we can get started. Uh, you want to start it off in about medium high heat. So here we're going to turn it on, make sure it's on, the house doesn't blow up. Ours is about number eight. So you just let that heat up there for a bit. And what you want to do is grab uh, your olive oil. So as long as you do that, you want to pour some of that olive oil that's in there. Whoops, a little too much, but it doesn't matter. And while that's heating up, you want to grab some of that sofrito ingredient that we talked about, okay? And uh, what you want to do is, since we're making about a cup of rice, what you want to do is grab about four good spoonsfuls of uh, sofrito. And as you can see, you hear that sound, that means that you're now stir frying all these ingredients in sofrito. So I'm going to grab some of the rice that we have here. Um, and, you know, we're only going to do about a cup of rice, so what you want to do is grab one of your measuring cups and we have some short grain rice like we talked about, but you want to keep that, the amount of rice to the ratio of water um, exactly like kind of how we're helping you, because that's really the secret of, of giving you that, that texture that you actually want. You just take that cup of rice that you have and just pour it all in there, okay? Just without any water and just stir fry. Let every single grain go in there and then just start getting covered in that so frito goodness. I'm gonna grab uh, some of that uh, sazon that we were talking about. Pour some of that stuff just around. You don't have to use a whole pack, um, you know, if you wanna go light, you could just use half a pack. We're gonna fill about a cup and a half of water and that's like part of the trick that we're using, okay? Uh, you wanna get, you know, because it's short grain rice, you wanna use this ratio, so I'm gonna fill this with a cup and a half and a half, there we go, and a half of water. And uh, as, as you make sure that it's nice and hot, I'm gonna take this water, and I'm gonna just put it right in there. You should hear it already start making that sound. Perfect, and as you can see, we, uh, we poured it, and now what we wanna do is we wanna stir this as best as we can, make sure that every single grain has actually touched the water. And so as you can see, as, I, as I'm stirring it, you know, I should feel that the spoon is actually very smooth. I can stir every grain, nothing's really sticky. And you should see this nice color of the water. Now, as we wait for it to boil, we're gonna add a few extra things. Now, one of the tricks to this is, is that you can use water like we did, or you can actually use uh, chicken stock, or you can use chicken broth. Now, instead of that, we're actually gonna use some of this uh, Nora stuff, which is the same thing. It's just, it, it's like the chicken broth, just in a nice little cube. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, Take this, and I'm gonna probably do, now I like this stuff, so I'm probably gonna do about a big spoonful, which is about two tablespoons, and it's gonna give it that extra flavor to the rice. Now, you know, as you notice, we're not really adding that much salt to the rice, 
uh, or other flavors because the sazon, the chicken stock here already has all those flavors. Uh, so frito already has all those flavors. The last thing we're gonna do is add some of those olive oils and capers that we have. I'm probably gonna do about a spoonful of these olive oils. I'm gonna take some of those, and just pour them in there. Cool. Cup. I mean, a, a tablespoon. And we're gonna do some capers. And capers, uh, if it's a cup of rice, usually I'll probably just do half of a tablespoon, so it's just about this, this much. Just pour it in there, put it on the side. So we're gonna leave it there and we're gonna leave it uncooked in medium high heat until the water starts to boil. So. So it's been about six to eight minutes. Um, you know, we left it cooking uncovered. Uh, so now what we wanna do is add the gandules. Now before you do that, uh, one trick to know uh, whether uh, the rice is already being cooked is by taking that original spoon that you had and making and seeing if it actually balances on the top of all the rice. Uh, if the rice is not fully cooked, the spoon would actually fall to the bottom. So uh, it says that we're ready, so we're gonna take our uh, half of a can of gandules or pigeon peas and we're just gonna go in and just add them to directly from the can. Well, you know, you can clean some of the preservatives, some of the liquid that comes with the can. And you wanna take that and just kind of spread it on top of the uh, of the rice that's cooking. So now what we want to do is take this and set a timer for about 20 minutes to kind of keep it finishing, uh, let, let the rice uh, finish cooking. Start the timer and from here we want to cover it and let it sit there on medium heat. And we're going to take a look at it. Uh, that looks pretty good. And what we're going to do, we're just going to now just kind of stir the rice so we can see it has a nice orangey uh, color to it. Again, normally you would serve this with some beans, some rice, I mean, whether the rice is here, but some chicken or beef. So it's just a side dish, but for a nice little presentation, uh, we're going to take a small plate, okay? Um, and then we're, I'm going to use one of these onion containers that you see here, a nice, like, big spoon. And I'm going to just take all this rice and just kind of pour it into this nice little dome-shaped container. Put some nice amount of it, and you can see all the gandulas are nice and cooked. Flatten it out, just to kind of make a little dome. And we're gonna come back over to uh, the plate. As you can see, I'm just gonna flip it over, give it a few taps, to make a nice little dome here. And for presentation purposes, we're just gonna take some chopped cilantro that we just chopped a little bit ago, just spread it on top the best way you can. So that is how you make arroz con gandules. And until next time, if you want more Puerto Rican recipes, just go visit our website at PuertoRicanFlavors.com.